Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at how we do, and this is the, the official word of this is called spill suppression. Okay, so when you have the green that's coming in around the edges of a photograph, when you photograph somebody up against the green screen, um, you have to take care of that. What's happening is essentially you've got light on the green screen, which helps you by illuminating the green screen, it helps give a solid green color. And then what happens is that green light bounces around and can fill in shadows or also fill in highlight areas depending upon the person's, you know, especially blonde hair can be really bad for this sort of thing. Uh, so we're going to get rid of it. And it's actually really simple, but it does take a little bit of time. Uh, the best way to do it is we go up here, we're going to add a color balance adjustment layer. And then there's a couple different ways that you can do this. Here's the way I like to do it, and I think this is fastest. But you'll get the concepts, and if you want to kind of come up with your own procedure, that's fine. Um, what I'll do is I'll find the area of the photograph that has the worst green, um, the darkest green. So this is bad, but it's not so bad. Down here is definitely the worst. So I'm going to zoom in here, and now in my mo in I need to identify my area, like is this mid-tones, shadows, or highlights? This is mid-tones and shadows really here. The highlights are actually very power, you know, are pretty powerfully the, the right color. So that was an odd sentence, powerfully the right color. Yeah, well, I think you understood what I meant. The highlights in this case are the correct color. It's our shadows and our mid-tones that we have this green, and what's happening is it's kind of coming up from below. So here in my color, my uh, color balance adjustment layer, what is the opposite of green? It shows you right here, it's magenta. You can look at a color wheel if you want to, but right here it's gonna tell you that. So what you're gonna do is you're going to adjust the magenta by adding magenta until the green is all gone. Now two things are happening right now. One, everything is going way magenta. So first we need to clip our adjustment layer to the, the layer that we're trying to adjust. So I'm gonna hit that button. Then the second thing is, uh, obviously, that's way too magenta for the rest of the portions of the image. That's okay. What we'll then do is we're going to back off. I'm going to select my layer mask that I have here for the color balance adjustment layer. I'm going to grab black brush, full opacity, I'm going to make it nice and big. And I'm literally just going to paint black. Now, that returns the layer back to its original, um, you know, cast, its original color cast. And if I hit the Alt key, that's my layer mask. whoop de doo right? Okay? But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip my brush to white. And I'm going to take my opacity, literally what seems to work the best is around 10%. Okay? I'm going to zoom in here. And I'm going to make a much smaller brush, okay? And I'm going to make sure it's got a soft edge to it. And now what I'm going to do is very, very slowly at 10% opacity, I'm going to start painting white back into my color balance layer where there is green. And so what this is going to do is basically it's going to allow me to paint in my color correction. And the, the cool part about this, and while, it, yes, it takes a little bit of time, and you can see I went a little bit too strong there, um, it allows me to paint it in at different strengths for different portions of the image. So I'm going to need a lot more magenta in these areas here, but once I get up into the sweatshirt area, I'm not going to need as much at all. Okay, so I can just kind of take this and deal with each section separately but do it with one color balance filter or adjustment layer. I keep calling them filters and they're not, they're adjustment layers, sorry. But you can see how I am able to start systematically getting rid of the green, uh, the spillover from the green screen into the area of the pants. And it's just gonna be, whoops, wrong tool. Um, it's literally going to be just adjusting my brush size and slowly painting it in until we've got a good normal tone. Now, let me say another thing. What I'm doing when I'm doing this is I'm also just looking to match tones. 
I might want to do a color balance filter on his, the layer of this, this picture of this guy. I might want to do one on the whole just to make him a little less, he's kind of a little orangey, yellowy on the face and stuff. I can do that, but what I really want to do is I just want to get rid of the greens. I want to, to, to kind of even things up. So let's, let's assume that I'm done with the pants, you get the idea. And then I get in here into the elbow, and again, just a few clicks, okay? And I, I can get rid of the green. You may find that you also have to move Go here. I just I only did adjustments in the midtones here. You may find that it's not working, and you may have to click on the shadows and make some more adjustments. Add some more magenta into the shadows to kind of help out a little bit. Um, so if I go back down here, as I add magenta there, you can see it's becoming a little bit more powerful. Um, now I need to back off of some areas uh, a little bit with my selection. So what I did here by adding some magenta into the shadows after I started working on my, my layer mask on the adjustment layer, probably not a good idea. You want to get it set ahead of time, but you also might need to do a little bit on your highlights and so on and so forth. It seems like it's working pretty good for me, so I'm not going to add too much magenta to my shadow layers at all because I've got a, I've got a pretty good setup so far, um, but it is helping a little bit. And so now I can go back with my brush and start going in here with a, and again, slow but steady, especially in a really complicated thing like this with all these wrinkles and stuff. And you can see I've already started to go a little too far. But up here, you know, on the elbow and, and that sort of thing, it's going to be a lot easier. Just a couple of clicks. And I mean, look at that. That's actually a little bit too magenta already. So I might lower my opacity down to like 3 or 4%. And I'm just going to click a couple of times. And the green is going to come out of those reflected areas in the shadows. Up here, it's a little bit more powerful, but just a few clicks, and now those shadow areas are more neutral. Here, I'm realizing that I've got highlight issues where my highlights are actually green. And guess what? I didn't really do a good, I didn't do any magenta in my highlights at all. So now that I've kind of realized that, it would probably be a mistake. Well, you know, we could try. If I add some magenta to the highlight areas, it might mess things up, so it might be better for me just to do a new one and stack them. But let's see, if I just add a little bit of magenta to my highlights um, and then start painting my adjustment layer mask here a little bit better, how does that? Yeah, that's, it, that, it becomes really powerful with that much magenta in there, but it is helping a lot in these areas here, so that's probably not bad. But I would recommend that you really inspect what you're trying to do before you start painting the layer mask so that you aren't making some of the mistakes that I'm making right now. But you can see how I'm able to kind of get rid of the green cast just with an adjustment layer. Okay. Now, let's just say I'm done um, or close to. That looks pretty good. I can still add more color adjustments on top of this. So let's say I wanted to kind of neutralize the tones a little bit uh, globally on his layer. I can go and make a new adjustment layer. I want to clip it to the layer again. And then I think that this will uh, <clears throat> probably benefit from a little bit of blue and a little bit of cyan in my midtones, um, and also possibly the shadows just a touch. Um, you know, usually I try to default to a little bit of a warmer tone myself. But if I turn that on and off, you can see that got rid of some of that yellow cast that was in there. And that also helped the green look a little less noticeable too. So I think that that's an overall a nice improvement as well. So through two layers, let's just take a look here. Okay, I didn't do a ton, but before, after. That's a pretty dramatic increase of using those color balance layers to A, get rid of the green, and then B, with the second one, to kind of neutralize. Now, you can flip-flop them too. Let's try a little experiment. If I take the top level one and bring it underneath, it looks about the same. Sometimes that doesn't work very well, but in this case, it actually works. I think generally you probably should neutralize things before you start doing spill suppression, but in this case, it didn't really make much of a difference. 
Um, be careful of that. You can find yourself fighting your own corrections. But again, look, before, after. So I'm well on my way of making a really good color balanced layer that's going to look like it fits into the image a lot better because it doesn't have green all around the edges. Does this make sense to everybody? Uh, yes, I like that. All right, let's get to work.